I snatched it violently from the delivery driver and flew into the bathroom. I didn't even bother taking it out of the box. The toilet exploded, but I didn't care. So I'm just going to jump right into it this time. Uh, you guys probably don't know, but I like to uh, write some pretty funny stuff for my friends once they email me or if they do something weird or stupid for me. So one of my friends, he, uh, he decides to get me, and I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's called a Squatty Potty. And <laughs> pretty much it's almost exactly what it sounds like. You put it under your toilet. You put your legs on top of it. Uh, which causes your knees to rise up and in theory causes you to poop better. So I decided to express my sincere gratitude to my friend by writing him the following email. It's been about two months since my friend purchased the toilet assistance stool. No, not to get up onto the toilet, but instead to make sure that the food you ate a few hours ago had absolutely no chance of surviving inside your digestive tract. What can I say? The process of excretion can only be compared to a real-life exorcism, where it feels, pleasantly if I may add, that the devil himself is trying to burst out of your gut. Needless to say, the stool changed my life. I found myself creating excuses to run to my magical place and discharge whatever little portion of food was left inside me. I was hooked. Soon, people started wondering why I've become so distant. The stool had literally taken over my life. It would have taken over your life too, if you would have experienced the kind of pleasure that I was now enjoying. It was my high. Then it happened. On one fateful Saturday afternoon session, I squeezed too hard, my thighs jerked, and the stool was shattered from the immense force my thighs and colon created. I sat there, shaking, crying, in complete disbelief. What will I do now? I ran outside, forgetting to wipe, to get my phone to place the order for the new one. It was Saturday night, and even with overnight shipping, it wouldn't arrive till Monday. Panic started engulfing me. I lay on the bathroom floor, weeping at what I've done. I stood up and started breathing deeply. I decided to step out of the bathroom and resume breathing deeply, for obvious reasons. I told myself that it was only a couple of days and that everything will be fine. Was I wrong? For what seemed like the next ten years, I crept to different corners of my house to curl up and not think about it. Part withdrawals, part extreme pain. I found myself thinking that I was not going to survive this. I contemplated ending it all. I became enraged. Why did he have to introduce me to this magical device? It was his fault! My stomach felt like it was about to erupt, even though I hadn't had one bite since the incident. Then, a knock on the door. It was here. I snatched it violently from the delivery driver and flew into the bathroom. I didn't even bother taking it out of the box. The toilet exploded, but I didn't care. I was at peace again. Well, I really hope that you guys enjoyed that one. I got one more for you. This one is for Adboka Effect, who is a fellow YouTuber, uh, my employee, and a really good friend of mine. Uh, one day he was basically just sitting and told me how his day is just flying by as I'm sitting in uh, the library. So he was just asking me how my day was going, and I decided to tell him a little bit about it. So this is what I told him. The professor was done speaking. I glanced at my watch and it read 10.45 a.m. I took my time getting out of the class. I strolled casually to find my next class and after slowly ventured to the school cafeteria. After what seemed like an eternity of deciding which type of sushi I should get, I finally chose the California sampler. I paid for my food in the sunny water and sat at a nearby empty table. The cafeteria was immersed with my previous semester classmates. I did my best not to make eye contact, which would undeniably be followed by an awkward head nod or smile, and God forbid, maybe even a conversation about last semester's grades. I took out my phone, as I normally do, and started reading the headline news on CNN.com. 
will bond with this drove dad. I finished my meal feeling strangely satisfied. After all, it was only eight small sushi rolls. I ventured outside and with a casual pace made my way towards the library. I waited ever so patiently for the elevator to come downstairs and I rode it to the fourth floor. On the fourth floor, I walked past eagerly studying students. Or were they panicking already? I noticed an empty table in a corner and sat there. I looked at my watch. 10.46. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Since that was my first day back in class for quite some time, taking a pause, Boca asked me uh, how everything was going on that first day. To which I answered with the following paragraph. The sweat, anticipation, uncertainty, fear, and a general disbelief in the complexity of the subject seemed to overwhelmingly consume the air around me. Honestly, I spent most of the class swiping at the thick mist consisting of anger, sweat, and B.O. In hindsight, I must have seemed even more deranged than the rest of them.